Thank you so much, everyone, for staying with us. The National Bureau of Statistics has since released some figures about the Nigerian economy. Um, the major one that uh, caught a lot of people's interest is the inflation figure. Uh, things got bad in the past few uh, months, and perhaps uh, the projections are looking good uh, in the past few months until the January and February figure came out to clearly show that things may not uh, be going well. The inflation figure that we as in March now shows that the inflation from January has come from 15.60% uh, to 15.70%. Uh, uh, it does mean a lot of things. That things, uh, prices of things, the price of commodities in the market. Uh, one of the reasons, of course, is uh, the issue of uh, fuel which of course uh, uh, implication is on food prices, transportation, and a host of other things. Um, our friends here at, uh, uh, at FDI has helped with some of these figures then and now, from 2020 and 2022, everything is in the red, and how prices have shot up. So let's get inside into this. I'm being joined now by an economist, Mr. Muda Yusuf, who joins us from our Lagos studio. And here in our Buja, uh, Buja studio is Alaji Yabaji Sani. He's a chairman of IPAC and the national chairman of the ADP. Thank you so much for coming. Tonight. Thank you for having me. Sure. Let me begin with uh, Mr. Yusuf tonight. Did you see this coming? There are projections and uh, predictions about the inflation figures, which uh, naturally were said things will get better. But from January and February, it, it was a dramatic change in things. What really went wrong? Yeah, thank you, Shimon. Well, this, this, is not, uh, this did not come as a, as a surprise. Uh, because if you look at the scenario of inflation over the last one year, uh, the situation has been really very, very bad. And if there is any major worry uh, for the citizens and for businesses at this time, I think it's about the high cost of goods and services because of the very profound implications uh, that these things are having, uh, both for the welfare of the people and, of course, the, the, the prosperity of businesses. So it has been really been bad. Now the inflation figure we had 15.70 headline inflation. Uh, core inflation was around 13.7. Uh, the food inflation was slightly over 17 percent. But if you look at the reality of prices on the ground, uh, mind you, these are year-on-year -year figures. If you look at the reality of the prices on the ground. And going by even the data that you just displayed on the screen, if you look at the basket of goods that the average Nigerian is consuming, or the basket of uh, products that even businesses have been using over the last one year, you'll be talking about an inflation rate of between 30 to 100 percent. It's as bad as that. I mean, talk to anybody, talk to, talk to any, any citizen, whether market women or any investor. So it's really very bad. And uh, it doesn't seem to be abating. Uh, uh, so th that is where we are. Uh, of course, there are issues, stories about the energy, energy prices. There are issues around the, our foreign exchange, the currency depreciation. There are issues around the transportation cost. There are issues around the, the insecurity affecting the agricultural production. So these are some of the key, key issues of concern. But really, I think we need to declare an emergency as far as the cost of goods and services are concerned. Inflation rate of 15.7% is understating the matter when we look at the severity of the impact. Of the of the high cost of goods and services over the last over the last one year, I would say. Um, if you look, let's let's uh, look at the pictures again. Uh, some of these indicator, and uh, of a major concern is that of the the power and the national grid. If you look at it, in 2020, we calculated about 5,340 megawatts, but as of now. 
It's uh, 2,000 megawatt. Terrible. I mean, the, 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 the grid has collapsed several times. If you look at the arrow pointing, 63% in the change, just in less than two years. If you look at diesel, which is a major issue also, 190 naira to, 100, uh, to 650 naira. In fact, it's even more than that. Uh, in some places, about seven to 800 naira from people say they buy it. It's over seven, uh, 242%. Petrol, 145 and 165, 14%. Bag of flour and one of the major food uh, consumptions on the table of many Nigerians, 8,500 naira in less than two years is gone to 22,500. 181% uh, change in that is gone terribly bad. Oil price for the three dollar and one hundred and three dollar. I mean, this should be good news in any case because that is our major uh, uh, earnings for for the country. But Mr. Amuda, uh, um, give us a sense of the first two or three items that I mentioned here: the, the the issue of power, the issue of diesel and petrol. If these continue, what are your biggest fears? Yes, uh, the challenges around energy prices, of course, is one of the uh, major major drivers of uh, of inflation. Now, the cost of diesel, at least by recent accounts, has gone as high as uh, even 700, 700 naira per liter. So this has a further, this will further put a lot of pressure on prices generally. First, we have uh, the uh, factories and businesses that rely on diesel generators because of the power situation. This is going to increase their cost of production. It's going to increase the operating cost. And uh, of course, it's not in all cases that this cost can even be passed on to consumers. So both on the consumer side and on the investor side, uh, everybody is taking a hit. You know, and of course, there is also the issue of transportation. Many of the trucks that move goods around the country, whether they are moving raw materials, they are moving uh, food products, all these uh, buses and all of them, are, all of them are running on diesel. So if you have this kind of almost 200 or 300% jump in the cost of the basic fuel that they use, you can imagine the implication for transportation costs. And we have known that over the years, the cost of transportation is a major driver of food inflation. So this, again, will affect the cost of food. Invariably, will affect the, 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 the poverty situation. It will erode purchasing power. Then, of course, you know the situation with the aviation fuel. This is also affecting aviation fuel. Only recently, we were told that uh, the uh, one hour flight will be just uh, will be minimum of 50,000 naira. Now that we have seen this kind of sharp increase in, uh, in energy prices, what is going to happen? Have you heard the screaming of the airline operators about their capacity to continue to sustain their businesses? So all of these are very disturbing, disturbing uh, situation. And uh, concerning okay, petrol, so although you're, before, you're before I come back to before, yeah. But before I come to, uh, back to uh, Abuja studio here, I, I'd like to ask you a quick question because that will be bothering a lot of the minds of people. What has gone wrong in the last two years? What did the government do wrong that has caused this dramatic change in the economic indicators? Well, a number of factors. Some of the factors are external. Some of the factors are also domestic. The external factor, at least the most recent, is the... Uh, Ukraine Russian crisis, which of course has affected energy prices globally. And unfortunately, because we are not refining, and that is where the domestic angle of the problem is, we are dependent 100% on the importation of petroleum products. So as these prices go up, and because this uh, diesel, aviation, fuel, kerosene, gas, they are all in the deregulated space. So as crude oil prices increase, the prices of all of these items are increasing. So we are paying a very big price for the mismanagement of our domestic oil and gas sector, for the failure to reform the sector, for the failure to allow investment 
to flow into the sector over the years. That is the price we are paying for now. So that is the situation. Hmm. Then domestically again, we have the challenge of, of Forex. Because even for the individual uh, companies that normally import some of these products, whether diesel or aviation fuel, access to foreign exchange is a big issue. Many of them are not able to access foreign exchange you know, to the level that they need to import significantly. Many of them are falling back on the parallel markets to source foreign exchange at uh, 560, 570. So again, that will reflect on, 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 on the price of the products. So the foreign exchange situation so, is also contributing to this problem. So it's a question of the way we have managed our oil and gas sector that led to the collapse of all the refineries. All right. That has obstructed investment in the but, sector, that has led us to be a major importer of refined petroleum products. That is the tragedy that we face at the moment. So th this, these are the, these are the let, principal Let me come factors. to, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Yusuf. Let me come to Abuja studio and let's hear from uh, energy and a crude oil expert, someone who has worked with the NNPC for years, uh, is also the national chairman of IPAC, uh, Alaji Abaji Sani. Give us a sense of what is happening. I mean, the queues, uh, diesel, price of diesel, and all of that is explained in, in, in part. But the question is, how do we get out of from, from this, uh, uh, this problem? Well, so there, is, uh, there are a lot of problems, like you said. There are structural problems, there are human problems, there are management uh, problems that uh, have bedeviled the, the development of the oil and gas sector. And uh, lack of accountability, I think, is at the bottom of everything we are talking about. Because look, for instance, let's take, for instance, what is happening today. Why are we where we are today? Why do we have this crisis in the supply of uh, uh, fuel in the country? It's because somebody somewhere deliberately, you know, swindled the country by importing foul fuel into the country. And nobody, to my knowledge, has been punished. It's, it is not as if we don't know who these people are, because we know. We know. Has the, the only, government come out with the names of these people? The only, the only entity that imports fuel into this country today is an NPC. Private sector is not allowed to import. So you think an NPC is behind all of Certainly this? Certainly they are, because and the only agency also that is responsible for checking the specs, that is the quality of the fuel that we are bringing to the country, is government agencies. You have the midstream and downstream regulatory agency. What were they doing? Government also has employed people that are supposed to be uh, inspectors. You know, when this cargo comes into the country, they're supposed to take a sample of the, sh of the cargo, take it to the laboratory, and uh, analyze it, ensure that it meets the specs that is, 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 is suitable for consumption before you are allowed to be discharged. So what happened? Why did all this thing fail? And why is nobody, somebody, somebody in the same country, somebody would have resigned by or, now. Or somebody be sacked and prosecuted. Or somebody would have been sacked, you know, for, for property, for accountability. But here you are, your people, you know, are coming to the television, you know, praising themselves. And it's, 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 it's such an embarrassing situation we have in this country. That is where we are, where we are today. When you look at, I'm talking about structural problem in the, in the oil and gas sector, like the gentleman from Lagos has said, it's because we fail to manage this God-given, you know, asset that would have taken this country miles, you know, away from where we are today in terms of, you know, our development. But people say yeah. that sometimes when there are problems, uh, it benefits some people. The Ukraine-Russia problem should have been a benefit for Nigeria. Certainly. In the real sense, because it's supposed now, to be. I, mean, if, I mean, the problem of uh, shortage might be because we don't have cargo coming into the country bringing those fuel. Exactly. But if we were producing locally, and we would, but, have, we would have gained from the price of but, crude that got But gone nobody up. has been held accountable for all these things happening. And this, this is the point I'm making. Look at, look at, look at even the quota given to us by OPEC of 1.8 you know, million barrels per day. We can't even meet that quota. And, and, and look at what happened. Just recently, in the papers, the Auditor General said one point, about one, 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 107 million you know, barrels I mean, of crude oil it's missing, you know, 
Nobody is nobody's held accountable for that. I'm aware that this is a, a, a something that is happening, you know. So if you want to know why are we where we are today, I think squarely it's at the doorstep of the government because this is not a sector that is uh, that is anyhow. All right. It's, it's about, it can be managed. Our and, friends, are, our and, friends at Financial Derivatives did uh, a bit of research for yes. us. Uh, when we're going to discuss this matter, which should give Nigerians some perspective. I like uh, those uh, uh, ink indicators, the 10 leading indicators to be put on screen. And I like your reaction to it. If you look at it, even the price of sardine, the fish that is canned, has gone from uh, 200 naira to 600 naira. That's a 400 naira difference yeah. just in two years. Cooking gas, a major problem, 3,500 to 8,000 naira. Rice, 25,000 naira to 30,000 naira. Fertilizers for farmers, 5,000 naira to 16,000. When we wonder what's happening, because we have production of fertilizer locally. So what is going on? We have production of rice locally. Why has that incremental uh, change uh, happened? Inflation, 13.20% from 2020 to 2022, to 15.70%, to, uh, 2.5%. Percent uh, difference just in two years. Naira, the parallel market, it now goes for uh, 582 naira as we speak, compared to 365 naira in the past uh, uh, two years. So if you look at it again, the power sector, the diesel, the price of petrol, the price of the bag of flour, the price of oil price, everything is not in favor of Nigeria and Nigerians as we speak. Can you talk to those uh, figures, please? Uh, well, well, the figures are, are, are the way they are. In fact, if care is not taken, they will, do, they will only go. You know, worse. Do I know, why do I say worse? Because the government that's supposed to take care of all these things, unfortunately, the oil and gas sector is in the hands of the government. When, when, and then this government, to me, is not yet really, uh, in, on, you know, in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, has not summoned the capacity, if there's any at all, you know, to deal with these problems. And that's why these problems are going from bad to worse. So the point is that, you know, whatever happens in the, in the, in the uh, energy sector has multiply effects, you know, on all other sectors of the economy because of the backward and forward linkages that other sectors have with oil and gas sector. That's why when the price of, uh, of petrol goes up, you find that, you know, transportation will go up, you know, that diesel price goes up and things like that. But like I'm saying, there are fundamental issues which we are not addressing. This is why we are having these problems. If government has taken time to really deal with the corruption that is in the oil and gas sector, because energy sector in all ramifications, whatever how you look at it, everywhere in the world, is what develops, what propels development the of the country. in Russia, for example, Russia supplies about 40% of energy to other exactly. parts of Europe and exactly. the world. But yeah. now it's a major, and the world need to rationalize it. Exactly. Uh, and, that's, and that's why Biden could not uh, you know, introduce, I mean, uh, the sanctions they wanted to introduce, yeah. because they see that uh, on the other hand, they will, it will, be, they will be the worst of Just for a moment, so, uh, yeah, Elijah, let, me, let me go back to Lagos, and yes. let's look at solution. I'll come back to you mm -hmm. to ask the same question. Mr. Yusuf, if you, if you were the president, with your economic knowledge how do you turn the tide or the the end of uh, uh, the figures that are moving in a bad trend how, what would you do immediately to stop this bad trend well a, a combination of uh, propositions first the foreign exchange policy needs to change because in all of this, and this is not just only about the oil and gas, the fact that we have the kind of structure of foreign exchange market that we have today is a major factor in, so, in all, of this, all of this problem. Of course, I've, I've mentioned the, the external factors around energy, the disruption in supply, and all of that. But the foreign exchange policy has a systemic effect on practically all sectors of the economy. And to the extent that we need foreign exchange to be able to solve some of these things, if the foreign exchange situation is not right, and just as I said, those who need to import are having challenges accessing the market. There's a lot of rationing going on in the official window of the foreign exchange market. So the first thing to do, and that is also reflected in the National Development Plan, under the macroeconomic strategy, it's a top priority is to have a flexible exchange rate regime so that the, the, the foreign exchange market can be a lot more liberalized, there could be a lot more stability and transparency, and access and liquidity will improve. That is one. 
Secondly, we need to decouple the energy sector from the bureaucracy and the, and the politicians. What we have had over the last two, three decades is that this very critical sector is being driven by bureaucrats and politicians. That is why we are where we are. And each attempt that was made to reform the sector, to decouple the, 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 the bureaucrats from the system, has met, been met with a lot of resistance, both from some vested uh, interests so, and um, also Mr. from Mr. Labor. Uh, Mr. Mr. Yusuf, yeah. Oh, it's unfortunate. L let me ask uh, Mr. Yabagisani the same question. What would, do you think is the, the solution is? Well, the solution is both macro and micro. At the macro level, we must, you know, like he says, you know, address the issues of the foreign exchange because it matters a lot. You know, and that is why even the imports, because we import everything that we consume, including fuel that we're talking about, where there's a lot of scam, and you go to the foreign exchange, you know, management by the CBN, the CBN that, that to me, I don't know, this is not the uh, uh, the to talk about that, but I think the CBN should be more engaged in managing our monetary policies and issue of pricing, you know, but they are not doing that in the manner that is supposed to be done. Uh -huh. So issue is that of macro aspect, the macro aspect. Micro aspect is that NMPC, you know, although it's defunct now, you know, should be managed in a way that Nigerian and Nigerian economy should derive the benefits that, right. you know, is in that sector because of its linkage with other things, like I keep saying, with other sectors of the economy. So right. my solution, and what I think the president should do, or which we need to do as a nation, right. is to ensure that foreign exchange you know, uh, management is, is, is in, in line with the, with the demands and supply, mm -hmm. you know, not, not in the administrative manner that is done today. So, uh, thank you so much, Alaji Yabajisani, and uh, Mr. Um, uh, Dr. Muda Yusuf, the CEO of the Center uh, for the Private Enterprise. Uh, thank you so much for uh, coming tonight on the program. Uh, maybe a lot of Nigerians, as we speak, are watching their television, uh, powering it with a generator and perhaps not add electricity in a couple of days. We hope that things will get better. And thank you so much for the knowledge of your share tonight.